All right, here's our carburetor. It's a Walbro, and I got a Walbro K20WAT uh, kit here. Put some again. Put some links down below there. So we'll start on this side. Pull these off, and um, looks like I already had them loosened up where I was inspecting. And what I mean is hard. It's just this is uh, crispy. You can see I was fooling around with it earlier and pulled this diaphragm off. Mm. Poked a hole in it when I was messing around. Okay, you can see some some crud down in there. And some dirt. I'm just gonna flush that out real quick with some carb cleaner. And uh, you can see where our alignment holes here. This does not have a. Uh, I'm gonna leave the um, the needle and seat and everything in there. Just do these these parts here. I need to get something to get this gasket off. Yeah, all this stuff is just here. Hear it crunchy? I mean, that's just dry. This thing sat who knows where for who knows how long uh, before I got it. So, looks like we got a little little scuzz on there. We'll put some carb cleaner on this rag and um, try to clean this, this junk off of here. Mm, that's pretty good through with this razor and just clean everything up a little bit all right so you saw we had the, the gasket first and then the diaphragm metal ring down so let's open up our our carb kit I'm gonna dump everything out because it's all gonna come out anyways there's a washer in there in case we need that so here's the carb kit all your little pieces and parts so that looks good some of these we won't need some of them we will so what do we have on there first a gasket right so we put that gasket on there like that and then we had a diaphragm and let me show you this diaphragm nice and soft not popping or anything so we'll put that on here We'll put our put our little cover on there like that and get our screws started got all of our screws started we're gonna go ahead and tighten these things down I just run them up quickly and then go back and cinch them down we're not going crazy tight on these but we are tightening them down does not feel like it's fitting in there well Neither is that one. Let's get a Phillips. Yeah, there we go. So this side, diaphragm. Pull that screw off, and looks like everything came off with it. All right. So we have this style here. It looks like like that. So we need one of those. Get that out of the way. Oh, look how bad that is. Oh my gosh disgusting we're gonna clean that up and then we're gonna need it looks like we got a couple of different ones and it looks like that is the one right there because we have one that looks like this and does not look like that either we also have the rubber the rubber one here too we could use that one that one's non-ethanol I believe if I'm wrong somebody correct me and then this one here is is rated for ethanol also, uh, which th it already had this style in there, so we'll just go back with that. Let's pull this off of here. And we're going to go ahead and spray spray this out and clean that up. Man, it is nasty. There we go. I'm going to go ahead and shoot a little bit down inside of here. Make sure that's cleared out. And there we go. Got some junk in there. Clean all that up. 
Beautiful. All right. So that's good to go. So what do we have? We need one of these, right? We had it like like that. See how all that lines up? Beautiful. And we'll go back with this one. If we don't like it, we can change it out and put the other one in there, but this should this should work just fine. And then it looks like it goes on just like that. Everything lines up perfect. And we'll go ahead and put this screw back in here. Okay. One carburetor rebuilt. And this is says 194F2 on that side. Singapore right there. I don't see anything else anywhere else, but we'll just clean up the rest of this junk that's on here. Just to make sure it's ready to go. But other than that, we should be good to go. Alright, let's get this carburetor installed and uh and get moving forward with the rest of that. So here's all of our old parts. We'll probably end up just chucking these. And uh, we'll keep keep this random stuff here. And put that back in a little baggie and hold on to it. Just in case we need something in the future. Might have to take that handle back off. And it's not hard. You know, it kind of all falls apart. But pretty self-explanatory once you get it in there. So before we get the carburetor installed, we're going to go ahead and put a new fuel line in here because this uh, the old one has got kind of alligator looking and I uh, went ahead and got a new one because uh, you can see the filter just fell right off of there. The filter looks good. Might clean it out just a little bit. Um, it looks actually looks brand new. Somebody probably yeah, it had some old scuzzy two cycle oil left down and that's why it was red but Nah, that's good. Probably got replaced because it wasn't running right or something. So here's the original fuel line. And if you look right here, really close, it kind of... There you go. It's kind of got like that ozone look to it. It's kind of gotten a little funky. Here's our new fuel line. It looks, you know, very similar. Everything looks like it's going to line up, line up fine. And that's that goes down in the tank there. So just shove that on in there. And this is... Uh, a steel I don't know the part number of this I can put it all down below everything that I got so to help that rubber get down in there I'm just gonna put a little bit of this two-stroke oil around everything and it should slide on in there you can use needle nose from the inside and help pull it which is what I might do so you can see we've kind of got it got it started in there and then we're gonna clamp onto it right here with this and push and pull at the same time. We'll go ahead and put our new fuel filter on here while we're while we're at it. I just hooked it there with my little hook and then I'm gonna use my forceps to grab it and then hold it back here and get this thing started. There we go. All right, finally got that in there. Oh, before you put that carburetor on there, you want to make sure that little ring is in inside of here that goes into that boot. So we've got our link in place for our throttle, and then we're going to go ahead and get that out of the way for the fuel line. You can put the link on later. I like to go ahead and get it get it started and get it in there. Now that just slides right up onto the impulse line. That looks good. Make sure the impulse line is on there. We're going to use the forceps again to get the fuel line on. Just like that. That looks good. All right, let's go ahead and get the throttle hooked up. We're going to go ahead and get the handle assembly re uh, put back together. So we've got this spring here for the the trigger that provides tension for that. We've got our, our throttle link here. We've got a operator presence switch here. 
goes on like that so you can see it won't pull the trigger until this is depressed so then we just put all this back oh, gotta get our link back in there put all this back on here and the handle holds the link into the the throttle so it's kind of it's kind of tricky there it looks like I messed that up yeah did not get the the link into the trigger we'll get that back in there start back over get the link in there there's a little tab here that catches that spring that goes behind the trigger and that goes into there in fact we'll put a little tension on the trigger to help hold hold that in there and hold this in place and then we can go ahead and put the handle in place now that's working beautiful all right so now we got to get our screw hold all that together and there was a little brass screw floating around here somewhere all right we got our little screw here and that's just a straight blade and that goes down into the base of the handle right here or the cover to hold the cover on go ahead and put the uh, nuts on for the carburetor let's do that and these are eight millimeter or five sixteenths so we can go ahead and get those started on there uh, so let me go get a uh, wrench for that we got a wrench here should have a nut driver but this is what was available so we can go ahead and check compression on this I guess right uh, we want to let that sealant seal up so we'll, we might do that and then come back and check compression. All right, so get those tightened up. Should we put the ridiculously dirty air filter on there? Sure, let's do that. All right, we'll go ahead and put this air filter on here just for kicks and giggles. Keep any dirt out of our brand new carburetor and um, cylinder here. We already checked squish, right? Yeah, we checked that, so that's good there. Uh, so let's go ahead and get this clutch drum reassembled. So I've got some grease here, a little, little dab of grease before we put it back together. This clutch looks in rough shape. We might be getting a new clutch for this one. Well, we can at least start it up today. So there's that. Let's see here. We're going to need a washer. Oh, we need to put our... Yeah, that, that's in bad shape. Look how far that's worn down. Golly. That's alright. We'll get another one coming. No big deal. Put that washer in place. And we have our snap ring here. So let's go ahead and put that on there. That's good. Alright, snap ring is on. Let's see, what else do we Let's put the muffler on. Why not? We're right here. So we have our front cover, the base, the gasket. Alright, so what we're going to have to do here is kind of put the gasket in place and then um, get our screw started from the inside. And that'll help hold the, the gasket in place. So it's a T27 again. So we're going to end up putting both screws in there because that gasket's going to flop all over the place. We got our gasket installed back here and our bolts ran through to hold everything in place. And the orientation is the little clip part that goes toward the top. Alright, we're just going to tighten these uh, muffler screws up. Make sure these are tight so they don't rattle out of there. I think we're good there all right let's go ahead and finish putting the muffler on there we'll put this front piece on and then we've got our two two screws right here all 
Oh, what's next? Let's see here. Looks like we're ready to do a compression check on this thing. So let's go ahead and uh, get our compression tester and uh, put the side cover, the recoil starter on here. We'll go ahead and pop that back in place. And here's our screws for that. Just the regular one goes back here. We've got one with a little bell on it. That goes up here around the chain brake. Just starting these by hand and I'll tighten them up with that little wrench like I've been doing. Okay. Make it a little bit easier for me to pull this thing over. I'm going to go ahead and put the uh, put the handle in place because it was uh, I could see this thing flying all around while I'm uh, trying to get it started. So we just uh, put these screws back in here that came out of it before we started messing with this thing. These are really coarse screws, that's what they look like. Alright, let's do our compression test now. So here we go, we're going to pull it over a few times. I don't know if you remember, it had about 80, 80 PSI to start with, now it's got about 130. So we can do that again. Now, some people hold the trigger open. Pull it, let's see if we get any different reading. Got at about 130. So that's a significant difference from 80. So it should start now that we have a uh, good compression, at least 130, and it should get better as time goes on. So we can do kind of a um, kind of a, a test afterwards to see if it does get any better. So we've got our spark plug we're going to put in here. Uh, see if I can find one somewhere. So we've got our plug in there. Now we're going to go ahead and get our plug wire on there. Oh man, what's next? Golly. Air filter back on here. Alright, that's good. So when we hit the choke, it trips that lever there on the uh, on the air filter. So we're ready for some gas and oil in this thing and see if we can get it a hit. We feel lucky enough to go ahead and put the top cover on while we're while we're here. I think so. I think so. Wow, it kind of looks like it's a chainsaw again. All right. So, let's put some gas in here, and we'll go ahead and throw some oil in here and see if we can get it to get it to fire up. That should be enough to get her going. And looks like we got some some bar oil here. We'll go ahead and put some of that in here. Nice and nice and warm out today, so this stuff's flowing flowing pretty good thing was bone dry all right well not really because you never get oil to dry out but put these caps on here I don't know if these are gonna hold I've got I know I've got a new gasket for this one don't think I've got a gasket for the oil but we can drain it back out of there okay so uh, I'm gonna get you over here and we'll we'll start it together All right, here we go. I've got my choke on. So you do that by um, pulling the trigger. Pull your trigger and then push that all the way down. Don't know how many pulls this is going to take. Let's let's give it a shot. I did check for spark, so we, we do have spark on this saw already. So Okay, well it started up. Uh, I'll tell you what I didn't do is back the run these screws in and then back them out one turn. I'm gonna go do that, both the high and the low. Leave the idle where it is, the low air. Uh, let me go do that real quick. I got it kind of tuned up there a little bit with the carburetor.
start. So we might go ahead and throw a bar on here and uh, see if we can get it in some wood and try that out. Let's get this thing started up. This chain's been touched up pretty good, so it's nice and sharp. The uh, raker's been uh, set right, and uh, so we're just going to turn it on here. <laughs> 